Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Mark wants to sell this house that he spent eight years transforming into something resembling a gothic cathedral. He really was like a labor of love. Lisa, his girlfriend, thinks his taste is interesting. Mark's taste happens to be very unique and kind of out there. <laughs> but she doesn't want to live here. And buyers seem to share her sentiment. This looks like a church. Yeah. Very dark. It's very looking close. So Mark's moving to Lisa's place and he's got to sell this house. I want to get it done with, get it over so I can move on and get married, move into another house, have kids. And this is stopping me right now and it's holding me up. So with a budget of $5,000 and some clever staging and design tricks, Scary doesn't sell houses. I'm going to transform this gothic church into a sellable family home. How you present your house is crucial if you want a quick sale. And that means putting aside your own personal taste. We're in Limbrook, Long Island, a desirable family-friendly community very close to the heart of New York City. Houses here are in high demand, but this house just won't sell. This house has 1,900 square feet of space, four bedrooms and one bath. Listed at $439,000, it's been on the market for more than a year. After living here for the past eight years, Mark's having trouble seeing why his beloved house hasn't had an offer. I would buy this house in two seconds. The decorating that he's done is a reflection of him, and, you know, he's put his whole heart into everything. But buyers have no trouble putting their finger on it. Mark's decor is over the top and makes this house feel like more of an old church than a home. The house makes me feel, you know, really warm, I think it must be hard for buyers when they walk in because it's a little bit out of the ordinary. To me, I love it. I don't know. I, it's beautiful. With the couple anxious to move into Lisa's house, they're ready to make the necessary changes to get this house sold. I love it. I need to get rid of it. The property market in this area is really strong. Houses are selling, but this one's been on the market for over a year, so I need to find out why. A little unusual. So your house has been on the market for over a year, mm -hmm. which must be driving you nuts. Really driving me nuts. Very frustrating. What I think would be really helpful if I could have a look round and then we can see what the problems are and go from there. Absolutely. Let's do it. So what's this room? Is it a music room? I have is no it... idea what this is right now. Is it a junk room where you put your clutter? It's in transition. This is the first room you see when you come into the house, so we need it to have a bit more of an obvious purpose. Yeah, this is a bad first impression. So this is the sitting room? Yes, this is the sitting room. My immediate reaction is it's dark. I can see how big this room is, but I think some people might feel that it's smaller, you know, because you've got the dark drapes and the dark carpet. The problem is, is some people might not like floral carpets, so they're going to think, how much is it going to cost to take it up? That would be money they'll be taking off your asking price. Right. And did you put this in? I did. It's Venetian plaster. I think it's not necessarily everyone's taste, and I worry that maybe buyers will think it's going to take a lot of money or time to, you know, cover it. Mm -hmm. Not all buyers want to do work, so we need to give them absolutely no excuse not to buy this house. OK. Nice to see hardwood floors. Yep. Buyers love hardwood floors because they look beautiful, they're easy to maintain. You've got a lot of big pieces in here. Big table, big chest. I think it's making the room feel smaller. It definitely makes the room smaller, for sure. <gasps> what is this? This is beautiful. Oh, thank you. That, that's actually uh, my grandfather's radio. I believe it's from, like, 1911. Very beautiful, but it is blocking the pathway yes. to the kitchen. Makes it more difficult to get around the table, and it, again, makes the room look smaller. But it's beautiful. Right, I, lo I loved it, and I wanted it, and that was the only place I could find for it, so... Right. The kitchen. I don't really like the kitchen. It's the one room I kind of didn't get my hands on yet, you know? You haven't turned it into a vampire den yet. Right. The problem is, is when you're selling your house, as you know, the kitchen is a big selling feature. Sure. But the good thing is, it doesn't actually cost a lot of money to 
update your kitchen. You know, with a few simple quick fixes, you can really make it look much more clean and modern and fresh. Wow, this is like a library family room. Yes. Fantastic. I love that built-in bookshelf, and I think buyers are going to love it because you need storage in a room. Again, you've got big furniture right. and dark woods. And what, what do you think that does? It makes the room look smaller, darker. So this is a real selling feature. It's an unusual room, but I don't think you're making the most of it. If a 13-year-old boy was going to buy this mm -hmm. house, we would have new problems. Huh? I'm a 13-year-old boy at heart, for sure. I think most men are. Houses in this neighborhood are selling for between $390,000 and $440,000. Mark's house, listed at $439,000, is at the top of the range, and it's not showing well enough to beat out the competition. The couple's realtor, Barbara, knows what they're up against. When I bring buyers in, they're a little bit in awe because of the decor in the house. Barbara's held an open house, and buyers seem to share my thoughts about the cathedral characteristics. There's a term for gothic. Interesting, we're not. Very interesting. Looks yeah. like a castle. It's not the kind of look I'm looking for, and it's really hard to envision the look that I want in this house. It's a little different than we usually see in, the, in homes, and people can't get by that in order to see their own possessions in there. It feels like being in yeah. church. You could change it just so much with your furniture, but it's still, you better like all this. The woodwork is nice, but you have to like it. And these indentations in the wall, that would be a lot of sanding and spackling to get that yeah, flat. It's going to take a lot of work. The whole thing would have to be done, and we're not really looking to do this much work. But I think you have to find the right person. For me, I wouldn't like this. No. So we had the open house. A lot of people found this style interesting, but it's also a little on the quirky side. And I think that's because of the drapes, the paint colour choices, sure. you know, quite a lot of furniture. It all give you that feeling of being slightly closed in. I like dark. I don't like a lot of light. I like muted light. You right. Know. Bright and light and big is what is going to sell this house. Because we're looking probably for a family buyer, I think we need to make this house more family friendly. Absolutely. If I was still going to be here, it'd stay right the way it is. Mm -hmm. Since we're trying to sell it, like you said, people have to live with it. And they, it'll be nothing they can't hate. So I think we need to start by decluttering some of the Gothic. OK. We're ready. We had some great feedback from the open house, so I know what the problems are. So I've come up with a master plan to tackle them. Starting in the foyer, we'll paint and add a custom storage unit for a great first impression. Drapes and furniture will make the space inviting, and cushions and art will complete the look. The living room will change dramatically with new paint and will introduce smaller contemporary furniture to show buyers more livable space. Plants and accessories will inject warmth and a cosy feel. The dining room will get a new chandelier and window treatments to update the space. A sideboard will add decorative function and a mirror will reflect the light of the chandelier while chic touches will turn up the style. The kitchen will get an inexpensive facelift with a lot of impact. We'll simply add a backsplash and finish the missing cupboard doors. The library will be brightened up and new contemporary furniture will complement the old wood detail with a fresh appeal. Artful touches will add interest and character. When we've finished with this house, it's going to be bright, fresh, clean, and I think it will really appeal to the family buyers we're looking for. Just hold this up for me like this. But before I can get my plan underway, we have to declutter and depersonalize the entire space. Perfect. The most likely potential buyer for this house will be a family. So we're trying to create a family-friendly vibe, and that means getting rid of the vulture, because to be honest, scary doesn't sell houses. There's a lot of work ahead to bring this house up to the level that buyers demand. This is a traditional railroad house, and each room is supposed to lead seamlessly onto the next. But these dark drapes cut up the flow, make it much more difficult for buyers to see all the way through, so they're gone. Meanwhile, I'm sending Mark and Lisa to see a house in their neighborhood that sold recently to help them better understand what buyers are looking for. This house has 1,700 square feet of space, three bedrooms and one and a half bathrooms and it sold for 425,000 in just a few weeks. Okay, well this is definitely a lot different. Wow, look at these gorgeous floors. 
floors are really nice. You have wood floors in your house, but you have it covered up. Yeah, I like the rugs. Mm -hmm. I like the wood and the rug combination, you know? It's just very neutral. And the fireplace is not pink, either. The fireplace is not pink. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh, wood floors in the dining room, More wood room floors, too. right. There's no carpets like ours. You know, the dining room table is obviously a lot less ornate than mine and maybe a little bit smaller, but it still definitely looks a lot bigger. Oh, and they have a lot of light coming in from the curtains. Like, your curtains kind of cover the light. It's not my taste, but I kind of understand why someone would be able to much more easily picture themselves in a house like this than in mine, because it's more neutral, right. you know? I like the contrast with the white couches on the green carpeting. Yeah. I mean, the boldest color in here is right. this green rug. Everything else is just white and beige. Like, our furniture is kind of darker. Let's check out the kitchen. Very neutral, right? It's got the eggshell paint. You know, we have that dark coffee color. Right. You know, in my house. No, I can see why this house sold. I mean, it's easier to picture yourself in this house than it would be to picture yourself in my house, because my house is a little more personalized. You right. Know? All the things I did to my house, it was kind of a labor of love. And you did a lot of custom things to your house, like a the fireplace. The fireplace, the stained glass windows, the doors, everything. Right. So. To see some of that stuff change, it's going to be a little, you know, difficult, but got to sell the house, right? I guess we have a lot of work to do then. <laughs> With the knickknacks and personal items out of the way, the crew can get down to work tackling the bigger jobs. Wow. I just got a lot done. It's amazing the difference a couple of hours makes. Seriously. But I'm dying to know, how is the comparable house? Well, you know, you kind of, like, got it when you saw what was going on there. You know, the walls were much more neutral. There was a lot less furniture. A lot more light was let into the house, mm -hmm. you know? When you're selling a house, you have to put your personal tastes aside. Sure. Because you want to appeal to as many people as possible. But um, I've got a few projects lined up for you, so would you mind giving me a hand? No, absolutely Excellent. not. Dave and I are about to attack one of the biggest eyesores in this home, the Venetian walls. I have a problem with this treatment for two reasons. Firstly, I think buyers are going to look at it and not know how to get rid of it. And secondly, I think they might think there's a problem with, with the foundations of the wall and we're using the treatment to cover it up. And a lot of times that is the case. So what are you going to do to it? We're going to scrape it, plaster it, prime it, plaster it, paint it. Let's just scrape off all the high parts, OK? OK. I wonder what Mark will think when he comes in and sees that we've taken away his Venetian treatment. I think Mark is up for anything. I think Mark is up for whatever we want to do. Note to self, never do a Venetian treatment. David, we've scraped this wall to death. It must be ready. Just when you thought the workout was over, now we plaster. I'm not trying to make a masterpiece here. Just put it on the wall. You've done this before. No, I haven't. <laughs> To save your wrist, you can put two fingers on the back of the trowel. Okay. That way, you get more even pressure when you push down the wall. I think you could handle this whole room by yourself. I know what you're trying to do, and it's not going to work. I've got to be somewhere else. So, finish the job? Oh, OK, so I get it. I build houses, you sell them. Exactly. Yeah. We want to give this room the contemporary feel that buyers are looking for, so the chandelier has to go. There are some great architectural details in this room, like the cathedral windows and the bookshelves. But at the moment, they're not standing out against this red paint. So we're going to paint the walls a white marble, and you'll really be able to see all this lovely detail. OK, so Mark, we're going to build you guys a cubby, okay. which, in guy terms, it's essentially a multi-purpose storage facility. Got it. Because when I walked into your house, you have this nice, big, inviting room, but there's nowhere to hang my coat, yes. nowhere to take off my shoes. Typically, we just make a mess. So the good part about this project is that there's two pieces. There's upper storage and lower storage. OK. This is one side. That's the other side. We're going to fasten these together. I'm just going to pre-drill right here, and then I'll glue that seam. All right. There you go. That's great. Perfect. Beautiful. One we, side we need done. the furniture store. That's right, Mark and Dave. That's it. Or Dave and Mark's. No, no, Mark and Dave's. All right, I'll hold this together, and you can give it a shot. OK. Good. Go. I've had a desk yeah. job for the last 20 years, and before that, right out of college, I was like an assistant to a contractor, so it was good to work with my hands again. I enjoyed it. Where's Lisa? This might turn her on that I'm doing this right now. Hey. She's never seen me do anything like this before. Okay. Good. What next? What next? Much more of the same. Really? Lisa, I wanted to do a design project with you. 
I wanted to put a piece of art in the living room. So we've got this canvas here, and we've got these bits. They're sort of like amazing paper with holes in. You just get them from art shops. So we're going to put the glue onto the canvas. OK. And then we're going to layer these over the top. And the, the glue dries clear, so you can put as many layers on and it doesn't show through. Do you think Mark was upset by the depersonalizing process or not? I think he understands the theory, but I, I know that he definitely doesn't like the white. <laughs> I know that for sure. That's another reason we're doing this, though, because just plain white walls, I think, are quite stark. So you want a bit of color. This is not too personal. And it's really easy to do. It's really cheap. All you need is the canvas, the paper, and the glue, and you're good to go. And then at the end, we're going to paint over a high gloss glue so it has a nice shine to it, and then put it on the wall. I think Sophie and the team are trying to modernize and neutralize everything. And it's not really to mark a nice taste, but I understand the theme now from what she explained. So, Mark, using plywood makes us very cost effective. We now need to hide the seams. Gotcha. We're going to use edge banding, and it gets ironed on. This is where you become domesticated. There you go. And as the glue heats, it becomes more flexible. Yep. David, I was born to do this. I mean, look well, at this. That's good. I have a few shirts and a couple of <laughs> pairs of pants I need ironed. So, uh, and I'll just cut off the excess right here. And this looks like two solid pieces of wood joined together. That's unbelievable. As far as anybody else is concerned. Right. And it's really amazing the stuff they come up with, you know? Exactly. To cover and it up. Now we're ready to prime. Mark and Dave's. Dave and Mark's. Yeah, whatever, Dave. So, what do you think of your house so far? Holy cow. For us to get finished, we need you to get out of here because we've still got a lot of work to do. OK, looks like you do. All right. You ready? See you later. No faith. No faith. With Mark and Lisa gone, our crew has lots of work ahead. Front entryways show best when they're organized and functional, so we're adding this bench that takes up minimal space. These bucket chairs bring a contemporary feel to the room that buyers once said looked like a church. The couple will be back soon, so it's time to put on the finishing touches. By replacing the dark red Venetian plaster treatment with marble white paint, we're highlighting the tin ceiling that it's not visually overpowering. This custom cubby fulfills two roles. Firstly, it helps to find this space as a foyer, and secondly, it gives buyers that storage they're going to need. This kitchen is proof that you don't need to spend mega bucks to get an upgraded look that buyers appreciate. The backsplash, the knobs, and the new cupboard doors cost only $300. You don't need my help for this, it's very light. No, I could always use your help. Look, fits like a glove, excellent. Welcome. Oh my Oh my goodness. goodness. Whoa. I didn't even recognize this. Before, the entryway gave an underwhelming first impression, but we've improved its appeal to buyers with new paint, storage, and stylish touches. I love the paint. Wow. It's the cabinet that I built, yeah. Oh, do you mean that Dave built? No, no. The cabinet oh, that oh, I built. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dave That's helped right. a little bit. You did a good job. I didn't know you were so handy. Well, now you know. Now it's a fantastic first impression. You walk in, it's pretty, it's functional, it's bright, and that's what you need to do. You need to hook buyers in the first 90 seconds. It's not what I would have picked, but it definitely makes the room look a lot bigger, and, uh, you know, that's what, it's, that's what it's about. You've got to keep in your mind, Mark, it doesn't matter what I think, it's what buyers think. Right, of course. What about the carpet? It definitely makes the room look a lot bigger. It's ginger sizal, and it's really durable, it's sustainable, and the best thing is this carpet now leads on through to your new Whoa. sitting room. Wow, this is amazing. Look, they put the piano here. That looks That's cool, awesome. then. The sitting room was dark and gothic, so we opened it up with light paint and smaller furniture to show buyers more space. I don't <laughs> even recognize it. The best thing is you have a brand new sofa all about correct sizing of furniture. If you love this room, you're going to love the dining room. But remember, it's what buyers think. So come on through. Look at this. Oh, my goodness, this is the original table. The dining room was stuffed with oversized furniture, so we scaled it back, brightened it up with contemporary lighting and added modern art to appeal to more buyers. 
I love that. Did you do that, Lisa? We yes, did. did that. Yes, we did that together. We incorporated a lot of your stuff. This yes. is your mirror, the vintage radio. Oh, that's right. How much bigger do you think this room looks now? You it can looks actually a lot bigger, right? walk around the yeah. table. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot bigger. I love the tin ceiling now against the white. I think before it was kind of lost because... It definitely you, stands out yeah, a lot more. It wow. does. You want the walls to be neutral colours because that makes the space look bigger, but you don't want it to be a bland box. Come on into the kitchen. Oh, wow, Lisa, look at the tile. We gave the kitchen a simple facelift with a new backsplash, finished cupboards and added accessories. Buyers like backsplashes because a lot of the time your walls in the kitchen get damaged because of like water or grease from cooking. And just having these glass tiles, they're really easy to clean and they, they look fantastic. They really do. I like that yeah. a lot. We just wanted to finish off the kitchen. It looks complete. The small things you did really make a huge difference. I know. It's amazing what you can do for $300. It really is. It's unbelievable. The library. Amazing, wow. what a difference. Yeah, what a difference. Before, the library looked like a dark old church, so we updated it with light colours and new furniture. This oh. is amazing, it's so much bigger in here. The two problems with this room were, firstly, you weren't seeing all this great customised architectural details because of the dark red paint, and it was too small because of all the big furniture. Yeah, the built-ins and the door really stand out more. The moulding around the window definitely sticks out a lot more. Yeah. That kind of pops. I like that. Lisa, you see what they did with the mirror? Oh, I love I that. I love that. that I really cool. do love that. I think this house is totally transformed. It definitely is. Now it's time for the final verdict from potential buyers. Oh my god! Oh my goodness, look at this place! <gasps> very nice, very nice, very bright. I absolutely loved it. I feel it went from quirky to incredible. The house is much more conducive to a family living in Limbrook. I love the foyer. There's so much you can do in that room. It's, it's very bright and airy. My favorite room in the house is the dining room because it's bright, it's open. I like it. It's, it's a lot of my style, it's modern. I like that. I like the brightness. It's great. I would love to put an offer in. 